Okay guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to lower your New Edge Mustang. I'm on TV! Oh shit! First cops, now this? Oh man, I'm going to be a star, son! Starting off by uh, putting your car up on jack stands. So, it was interesting putting my car up on jack stand because it always it already has a box lowering springs it sits pretty low to the ground so i needed to use uh two different jack stands i use the this small jack stand here and this uh low profile jack stand and the thing about this car is that um this lower jack stand wasn't long enough to reach all the way to the jacking point i actually had to squeeze that little one in the back and then slip this one in the front and i'll show you guys how i did that so with the smaller jack stand, I was able to place it here in this jacking box on the rear of the vehicle. Um, I slipped the smaller jack stand right here. I lifted it. Once this side was lifted, I was able to reach the low profile jack stand up uh, further in the front of the vehicle. Uh, I placed it here on the connector brace uh, just so it could give me a little bit more um, lift with the connector brace being uh, further down from the vehicle. And then once I would lifted it uh, so that the jack stand would fit. So once the jack was high enough, I placed the jack stand in the front of the vehicle in the jacking point, which is right there in the front. And so you're gonna be placing your jack stand there as well as the other side. And then um, if you don't have this uh, connector brace, this whole entire box back here is a jack stand. Uh, don't place it here because this will indent and uh, do some damage with some wires. As you can see, there's wires inside going through uh, this box here. So make sure you use the uh, jacking point back there. And um, that's how you do it. Uh, I do have uh, six, six ton jack stands. These are a little big, bigger. Um, I did use uh, in the in the beginning just for safety measures. I did use a smaller jack uh, stand just to um, keep things uh, safe and from falling, uh, so the car doesn't fall. As well as I placed um, so a wood pallet in front of my uh, wheels in the front because once you lift the back. Uh, your car can roll so you're gonna want to sure that your car doesn't isn't moving you want to have it in gear and the emergency brake on as well as taking a safety measure and put a uh, something under the wheels just to hold it from rolling while you're lifting the car because your uh, weights are going to be shifting uh, it is a little sketchy especially in here with this floor it's a little bit this floor is a little bit slippery so um, you just want to be careful you want to make sure that that you're very accurate with the points where your jack stands at with your uh, jack itself um, where you're placing it and uh, start off slow to see if you see anything uh, shift or move if everything is safe then you could go ahead and jack it up um, so for today's video we're going to be installing uh, shocks and struts but I'm going to go ahead and get started with the rear first okay guys now that you have your wheels off your car on jack stands and uh, you're gonna have to remove your panels from the interior of your trunk um, these are the bolts for the rear shocks there's one and there's the other and there's my convertible top motor um, if you have a coupe you're not gonna have that but that's where the top bolts for the shocks are located so you're gonna want to access to that first all right guys, so just go ahead and remove these bolts up here. And then once you have both of those removed, you're gonna go down here and remove the bolt on the strut itself. Okay guys, it's a uh, 18 um, socket for this bolt down here and you're just gonna um, unhook it and it has that on the other side to hold it in place. So how do you feel about this impact wrench? It's popping. You heard it from the man himself, it's popping. <coughs> and that's it guys, after you take out those bolts, all you have to do is give it a good yank and the, the rear shock is off. The new one goes in, same, same way you took it off, just in reverse. This gasket was in there, you might have to swap it out with the new kit, um, but you might be able to use it again if it doesn't have one. 
Okay guys, um, so the shocks that I went with are the yellow Coney's and um, Coney's a really good brand. They've actually been making um, suspension components ever since uh, people were riding around in horses. They made uh, shocks for hor uh, horse carriages. So they've been around for a long, long time and um, Formula One drivers even use Coney's so it's a really good brand. That's why I went with it. Um, and yeah, just go ahead and put them on the reverse way that um, you took them off and they do come with hardware as well okay guys so the uh, rear was fairly simple now the front is a little bit more uh, complicated uh, because you will need um, caster camber plates for your alignment because the car does run a lot higher from factory uh, the caster camber plates are going to help with your alignment and uh, adjusting the front strut to um, to be able to align your car after you lower it. So these are the caster camber plates I uh, purchased. They are SR and I bought these from uh, American Muscle. And this is what they look like. This is the packaging they come in. And once you take off once you take off your um, front strut, these are going to be going up here like that. And then you're able to adjust this so that your alignment uh, goes back to factory specs and that you don't get uneven wear on your uh, tires. Okay guys, so for this one, the front strut, uh, you're just going to take two bolts off right there that's uh, behind the rotor. Um, there's two in front of that plate and then there's two more behind the plate and then you remove the bolts uh, Just be careful with your rotor though because it will swing open and then your brake line is going to be pulling so um, Be cognizant of that and then once you're done with that you're going to go ahead and remove the top uh, Bolt up here and then your struts ready to come out Okay guys, so uh, the caster camber plates are pretty simple with the SR uh, product. You actually don't have to um, drill a hole into these. These only come with three uh, nuts and bolts. So it just plug and play. They go into the stock um, holes. And then um, it, it, it's a, you're going to need two people to do it because you have to come in from the bottom. And uh, it's a little hard to work in there, but once we got it in, it fits just right. And then uh, you're going to want to make sure that you put this bracket on the bottom of it right there. That's what holds it in place. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much all you do. After that, you're going to have to go to an alignment shop for them to align it for you. Um, you can't do it yourself because obviously there's a special machine that they use. And... Uh, for the strut itself, it's pretty much um, all backwards from here. You put it in, you bolt on the top bolt, and then you bolt on the bottom two bolts, and that's about it. So, a fairly easy job. I thought that we would have to screw a different um, nut and bolt back here because I've seen uh, caster camber plates that do have a fourth bolt, but these SRs are pretty simple, and they do have a lot of uh, play. As you can see, you have these... Um, uh, bolts that you could move on this center up and down side to side for the alignment so these are actually pretty easy to install and uh, we'll see how they hold up and they have a pretty um, nice finish as well to make your engine big okay guys so it's been a couple weeks later since I've installed the uh, struts and shocks but that video kind of ended at that point because we had some issues with the hardware that came with the Kony uh, struts. The, rears, the rear shocks were fine, but the front struts, um, the nut that holds the, um, the strut up here, it wouldn't go in. The one they provided wouldn't go in. So what I had to do was go to Ace Hardware Store and buy these uh, smaller ones. The other one was too thick, so that you couldn't slip a socket up top to hold the strut in place while you screw these on. Uh, everything would spin at the same time. And um, 
what I had to do was buy these thinner ones so that it, it could uh, have room for a socket to reach, hold the strut in place, and then uh, tighten these nuts. And for the other side, I was able to find one of the original nuts that came with the uh, previous struts, and I, I used that one. So this one was fine, this one was easy, but that one I had to go to Ace Hardware Store and find the uh, right nuts for it. And um, the nuts that I had to use were, I believe, 22 metric. And usually with American cars, you use a standard, but with this one, it was metric. So if you guys are looking for those, I found them at Ace Hardware Store. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much. We're nine subs away from 300, and I really appreciate you guys watching. And I also have ordered my clutch parts already, so uh, the clutch parts are coming in the mail. They should be here by Monday, so I'm going to be working on the car and hopefully getting it back on the road very soon. And then for you guys that want to see Miata content, let me know down below if you're uh, subscribed because of the Miata. I could uh, make some videos about that too as well. And uh, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you, and uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm just all about this money, I don't think about no thighs no Girl, you don't know about me, so me. get off my fucking D Born and raised in the thigh, this is real as you gon' see Girl, you don't know about me, so get off my fucking D